Well, let me give the floor to Mr. Stefanovic, as I was telling you. He's Vice President of the Belarusian Human Rights Center. Vyasna, the floor is yours. The presidential campaign is underway in Belarus, uh, and the elections will take place on the 11th of October. Generally speaking, the general situation in Belarus reminds very much the situation that we witnessed in 2010 during the campaign and the election. It's set proper, except for three distinctions. First, the elections in the, the, of this year are held against the backdrop of a new geopolitical situation that surrounds Belarus uh, due to the Ukrainian crisis. Number two, the elections in Belarus in 2015 are held against the backdrop of a worsening economic situation and that started that had started way before the elections ended and the third feature is that the elections of 2015 were launched against the unfavorable backdrop uh, with the human rights situation and uh, the situation, we've witnessed the situation all the way up to August. Repressions against the independent journalists who cooperate with foreign mass media outlets are being in incessantly conducted. And there are political prisons and prisoners and held in, in prisons, and the legislation is full of a full of various restrictions of civil civic and human rights such as the criminalization of foreign aid uh, unregistered organizations prosecution etc belarus practice continues to uh, apply capital punishment on the 22nd of august six political prisoners were pardoned and released our organization, among others, said that they were political prisoners. We welcomed that uh, move by the Belarusian authorities. It should be noted that they were released without move, uh, removing their criminal records. And that means some of their civil rights have been affected and they've been now monitored and... Uh, their movements verified, and um, that could result in a repeated rearrest. I also would like to say that in August, the authorities demonstrated softer approaches to some matters, such as, for example, in August, we did not witness any persecutions of independent journalists who cooperated foreign out media outlets. Uh, public protests uh, su such as picketing and demonstrations in, in Minsk are not being obstructed by authorities, but there are no systemic changes on the legislative basis in Belarus. As far as the elections is concerned, we have no illusions with regard to the outcome, possible outcome of the elections. That pertains to the procedures as well that are going to be used during the elections. The OSC recommendations have not been taken into account that the legislative changes have not been introduced, the changes that would introduce, uh, that would enable a transparent vote count. And for us, the issue is still wide open. What we're going to see after the elections, unlike the fact that we know what the outcome is going to be, we still don't know what the po what kind of policies and what kind of policies our authorities would pursue after the elections. Uh, and I'm talking here about the systemic legislative changes as well. We saw political prisoners released before, in 2011, for example, when the authorities released their political prisoners. But on the on 19th of December of 2010, we saw an even tougher wave of repressions against political opponents of the authorities and the representative of the civil society. So it seems to me that systemic changes could be the guarantee that the authorities would not resort to repressions, to repressions and that changes will 
be more systemic in nature rather than a reaction to a variety of events in the country. So it seems to me that a specific content for the dialogue between Belarus and EU can result and bring about result in and bring about successful changes in the country. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you. Only one uh, curious inquiry to Mr. Uh, Stefanovic. Well, tell us openly. I mean, what uh, are the promises of Mr. Lukashenko to people? What does he promise? Since I mean, it's a dire situation. I mean, economy is in ruins. In fact, uh, um, it's half uh, independent country, sorry to say. Uh, you, you should probably ask uh, Moscow leaders, Kremlin leaders, about uh, um, Belarus' future. What are the promises of incoming, newly re-elected Mr. Lukashenko? As to the promises by Lukashenko to the people, well, he is uh, promising peace and stability, and this is a major part of his programs, and uh, people are supporting it, especially in view of the situation in the Ukraine. And the later statements by Lukashenko point out to the value of the independence, and Lukashenko draws attention to the fact that uh, the Belarusians build their own independent state and they have to improve it, they uh, have to foster its growth. And if we are to uh, uh, cast our glance back to what Lukashenko said when he, just, uh, when he first came to power and what he's saying now, it's really very, very different. But uh, as to the real promises, he is not uh, giving specific promises. For instance, in 2010, he was promising uh, people the salary of $1,000 per month. Now he's not making such promises. But he is mainly playing with uh, stability, peace and stability, and, of course, uh, uh, taking into account the situation in the Ukraine it becomes more important, and some people uh, believe that democracy uh, leads to the consequences which we can witness in the Ukraine.